Praise God. I am honored to be here this evening. I want to specially honor our father in the house, the set man over this house, the angel of the Lord over this house. Can you please give the Lord a shout as we celebrate God's servant, Reverend Emmanuel and Methionim. Come on, you can do that better. Is that how you celebrate your father? Shout glory! I was so humbled when I learned today is his birthday. Congratulations, daddy. It's truly an honor we celebrate you. <laughs> Come on, give the Lord a big hand. And I also honor mama. I met mama already. Wonderful woman of God. Thank you so much. I don't know if she's in the building. It's such an honor to meet you. Thank you so much. God bless you, ma. And of course, every minister in the house, thank you so much for your labors. It's a great work you are doing here. And I'm, I'm so delighted to see this level of energy in worry. <laughs> the, things, the things the comedians told us about worry we realize they are not all true. We are seeing firebrands, lovers of Jesus, anointed people, full of glory, even right here in RCCG Champions Cathedral. Give Jesus the praise! <laughs> Somebody lift your hands toward heaven. Our time has started ticking. If you are hungry tonight, then I came for you. <laughs> I honor all the fathers and the ministers that have ministered before me, especially God's servant, Dr. Pastor Paul Enenche. I know so many great things have happened here. And so tonight, I just came to set somebody on fire. <laughs> and if you are that person, lift your hands toward heaven and talk to the Lord. Tell him you are ready. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Ali 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 Kadush, Kadush. You reign, you reign, you reign. Kadush. You reign. I want us to journey but I'm also seeing the time one of the challenges you have is when you attempt to breach a realm that is not governed by time and factor it into the realm of time it's a body but we will see how far God will take us but tonight before I begin 
There are certain men that God prepared here before I came. Because the Holy Ghost told me while I was praying before coming tonight, He said there's a strange move of prayer that is about to begin in worry. <laughs> and so there are certain men that have been ordained to champion that move. These ones are watchers in the spirit. And there is a power to stand and to sustain the rod of priesthood that God will put on them. It's a power. It's a rod in the spirit. And that's why I don't want to ascend before I begin. But as I'm talking now, I came for you. This is why I came. I came to activate the waters, the eternal river that is locked up on your inside. And so I speak as one sent of God. Every watcher every custodian every carrier of that mantle of a gatekeeper in the city of worry tonight hear the sound of the shofar wherever you are inside and outside i bring you the verdicts of the monarch of zion now let the summons of the spirit begin ushers the Lord will baptize them now with a fresh hunger. All you need to do is to find them for me. It's just going to happen for three minutes before I go. Inside and outside. Every watcher. Every custodian. Now I call you forth. Come up here. Come up here. Come up here. Come up here. Barakat of Elenataya. Zagate, Zagate, receive the wings of the eagle. Receive the wings of the eagle. By the spirit of the living God, the energy of the chariots, it falls on you now. You run, you run. To share the word of God but I'm seeing men step into light and so there is a dimension of authority you are about to begin to wield by the mysteries of light you will know what men don't know you will see the things that were locked in the ancient scrolls of eternity and by the strength of that wisdom you will live among men like a God wherever they are now by the spirit I ask the hand of God comes upon you. All of you, especially those of you towards my left, now by the Spirit, be overtaken by that light. Receive that grace. Receive that energy. Receive that dimension. Step into that river now. Yeah. Hey. 
coronations will take place in the spirit. The powers of the age to come. The scepters for those powers is handed to our generation. And many young people here tonight, you are rising to the occasion. You may not look it, you may not qualify for it, but it's not by power, it's not by might, it's by the spirit of the living God. And so many of you, your eternal ordinations are about to be activated. You stepped into a move of the spirit. You didn't come for a service, you came to align with a movement. And wherever you are, take your place in the ranks of God. Thank you, Father. There is a fire that will fall. I saw an overflow there now. Put the camera there. There is a fire that will fall on someone. You can't even stand where you are. Because that energy will literally shift you from where you are to where you ought to be. Everyone in the overflow distance is not a barrier. Now, I shift you by the Spirit. Receive that fire touch of the spirit that you are seeking take that touch now step into another realm of authority the movements of the waters of the spirit Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Something will shift in somebody's life tonight. You will not just receive healing. You will become a mobile operation of the healing anointing. You will not just receive a blessing. You will become the symbol and the similitude of the blessing. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Please, if you can, be seated for a moment. Please, if you can, be seated. <laughs> Many things are happening at the same time. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Somebody close to this pillar, you were shot with an arrow somewhere around your chest in the spirit and you have been having excruciating pain around your chest region. I just saw a quick vision somewhere around my left ear. You've had this pain, excruciating pain. That arrow just came out of you. Ma, please come forward quickly. I cause that affliction. It's okay, you can be there. Many things are happening at the same time. Please place your hand on your chest. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. I cause that oppression of darkness. Cease from now. The pains go. And every effect of that arrow. Shut down right now in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Please take a deep breath. You will discover that pain is lifted, that weight is gone. Take a deep breath. How do you feel? Oh my God, help the sister behind. The power of God just touched her. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I have to share God's word for a moment. Please be seated. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I will share for 40 minutes and then we'll pray. If you can't be seated, those of them who can stand fine, if they can't, just leave them under the cloud. Thank you, Father. I want to share with us tonight briefly. Like I said, I know diverse healings, diverse impartations have taken place in the course of the meeting. And so I just want to share with us briefly tonight how to walk in the supernatural. When you talk about the subject of the supernatural, there are two dimensions. There is a posture you sustain that helps you to receive of the supernatural. And there is a posture you sustain that helps you to administer the supernatural. A man who receives of the supernatural is blessed because he's making contact with the benevolence of God. But a man who administers the supernatural is not just blessed, he's a blessing. And so in this conference, you have not just come to be blessed. You have come to also become a blessing. So the things you have received, you will be able to communicate the same to the people around you and to your generation. The Bible said that you are a desolate land. No man went through you. He said, but when these encounters begin to take place, you will become a joy of many generations. Tonight, you are not just here to receive of the supernatural you are here to be equipped to go out there and walk in the supernatural. Praise the Lord. If we have 10 people walking tangibly in the supernatural, worry will become too small. This city will be hijacked. Imagine the magnitude of what God is doing in this place. What if there were 10 people that can command this level of authority? This city will be shut down for Jesus. And not so long from now, such operations will begin in this land. Thank you, Father. When man was created, he was created as an envelope of the supernatural. The mystery that governed the creation of man was reflective of the mystery that governed the creation of the realms of God. I want to start from here so that you understand the points I want to advance. Before God created the visible realm, he dwelt in the invincible realm. There was nothing like the visible realm. In fact, before God began creation, he was. And so when there was no expanse, whether supernatural, invincible, or natural, God already was. Because it's not limited, limited by creation. He is creator. And so when God began creation, because he is spirit of necessity, he needed to begin to create from the spirit realm. And the entities he created were spirit beings. But a point came on the strength of God's love. He wanted to advance the frontiers of creation beyond the invincible realm. And so his wisdom caused him to stretch a bit further. And he called forth materiality from immateriality. And so the progression of creation was from within God into the invincible and then the visible realm. Now what you call the supernatural is the ability to superimpose the reality of one realm in another. Those who dwell in the invincible realm, by the time the visible realities are transported into the invincible realm, they call it supernatural because it's not natural to their realm. Supernatural does not necessarily mean physical. Supernatural simply means superior to the realm that is natural to you. And so when Enoch went to heaven, it was supernatural because in heaven, Physical bodies don't exist. When Jesus ascended bodily and entered heaven, it was supernatural because that's a spirit realm. And so when a man wants to walk in the supernatural, in the visible realm, 
it is his ability to download the things invincible into the visible that you call supernatural. And so if the invincible realities are not materialized in your realm, you are not working in the supernatural. This is why the supernatural is not a, to it's a, it's not a story. It's a reality manifested. And until the manifestation is unseen, everything you are doing is a charade. Praise God. A generation will rise that will begin to leave heaven on earth. That's what it means. That you are walking on earth, but your reality is the reality of heaven. When a man walks on earth and he cannot be sick, then you know that this is not natural because men fall sick. When a man is walking on earth and is not limited by the powers of time, space, and matter, then you know that this is supernatural because those forces are beyond the visible realm. This is the dimension God has called us to live. And when he created Adam, that was the authority he gave him. He put Adam in Eden. Eden is a bridge. It's a portal. Eden is not earth. Eden is not heaven. Eden is an access point that connects the spirit realm to the natural realm. And God kept him there because God left him with a choice. If you want to journey heavenward, that's your choice. So Adam had the right and the power to enter into the invincible realm. He would have been the first man to enter the spirit realm bodily. But that was not Adam's priority because in Genesis chapter 3 verse 8, the Bible said it was God that came to Adam every day. Adam was carried away by the splendor of Eden and he kept eating fruits until he ate the forbidden fruit. If Adam was smart, what Adam would have done was to access the immortal realm because that door was open to him. But unfortunately, only God came in and out of the garden. And Adam did not take advantage of what was available to him until he was kicked out of the garden. Whereas, when God kept Adam in Eden, he said to multiply. Multiply does not mean go and farm. Multiply actually means superimpose heaven to earth until earth becomes a, a, a replica of heaven. What God wanted Adam to do was to download earth because Eden was not planted. Eden was downloaded. If you study Ezekiel 38, the Bible said that Lucifer was in Eden, the mountain of God. Eden existed before the earth was created. When God created the earth, what God did was to download Eden to earth. And what God wanted Adam to do was to create an amplification technology. That this Eden that was planted in a garden, spread it forth, let it dominate the earth realm. But Adam was lost in Eden. And when Jesus came, he took over from where Adam stopped. And so everywhere Jesus went, the Bible said he was doing good. What he called good and philanthropy was not just to give people bread. What he called good was his ability to bring the things that were locked in the heavens into the natural realm. And so when Jesus comes to a woman who is bent over for 18 years, he says, woman, thou art loose. They don't do that in time. In time, you need to see a doctor. But when a man comes from Zion, he becomes the effulgence of the powers of the ages to come. The Bible said a woman who was having an issue of blood spent all she had on doctors. All she needed to do was to touch Jesus. Because what Jesus did was to move around distributing Eden. Abraham, Adam did not understand why he was created. I came to correct the error of Adam. That's why the Bible said the first Adam was of the earth and earthy. He said the second Adam is the Lord from heaven. And that Adam is a life-giving spirit. His job is to spread the invisible dimension until the visible realm is dominated. And everyone who comes in the order of the Christ, his job is not to survive. His job is to dominate earth with heaven. If you are living to survive, you have not found the purpose of existence. We are not here to survive. We are the representation of the invincible God in the visible realm. And so when you find a family, God expects that that family will become a nucleus of heaven. When you find a society, God expects that that society will become a nucleus of the heaven. But unfortunately, not too many men are exploring the heavens. Not too many men are downloading heavenly realities. And when a conference like this is put together, it's beyond coming to receive a healing. It's actually to come to find out the blueprints of the divine. What do I do to carry heaven from this, family, from this altar to my home? Because once upon a time, there was quarry, there was crisis, there was death. But I have come to fetch heaven. And so when I go to my family, I will superimpose heaven until death will vanish. I will superimpose heaven until sickness will vanish. That's what we were called to do. This is why the Bible said, who shall declare his generation? He began the project, but now he's gone. Who shall declare his generation? When he left, he didn't call us Christians. He called us witnesses. That means we are the proof of a realm that is yonder. We are the proof of a life that is immortal. We are the proof 
of possibilities that earth cannot factor. And if a man has not touched it, it means he doesn't know why he's alive. The supernatural must be walked into our world. If the supernatural is not walked into our world, then those from the negative will bring their own dimension. And they will end up with lamentation and complaint. It will change nothing. Most of us complain and lament. Nothing is changing. What will change this world is when saviors come from Mount Zion. It says, saviors shall come from Mount Zion to judge the mountains of Esau. A time has come for somebody to bring the laws of righteousness to destroy the laws of iniquity. The time has come for somebody to bring the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus and shut down the law of death. The time has come for somebody to bring the law and the wisdom that governs divine health and shut down the protocol of sickness because we are the hope that the world is looking for. The hope of the world is not out there, it's in the church. And when we rise from here, it behoves us to bring the supernatural to a dying world. The world is hopeless, it's dying. It said it's under the bondage of corruption. It said, but sons will rise. Sons will rise. All springs of that realm will rise. And so tonight, I want to advance three ways of controlling and manifesting the supernatural. I told you it's beyond coming to be healed. Many will be healed tonight. Many will be impacted. But beyond that, you must carry something. And age is not a factor in this business. Gender is not a factor in this business. The Bible said women receive their dead back to life. This has nothing to do with whether you are male or female. The Bible said at the age of 12, Jesus was talking to the doctors of the law, asking them questions they couldn't answer. He answered it himself. So it's not a function of age and it's not a function of gender. It's access to the mysteries of the kingdom. When you understand it, you are in command. There are three things I want to advance tonight for everyone who wants to walk in the supernatural. The first is the mystery of height. You can't walk in the supernatural until you understand the mystery of heights. Height in the spirit is authority. It's not going upward. When you find men who exercise authority in the spirit, men who have the power to bring the supernatural to the natural, there is a height they stand in. This is why God himself is called the most high. Because if God is not the most high, he cannot control all the realm. For God to be able to control all the realm, he must be the most high. And everyone who wants to exercise authority over his context must be a high man. Highness is not to take cocaine. Highness is actually to walk into the realm of glory. <laughs> I'm looking at time. See, I can't, uh, there are things I want to crack, but there's no time. Time is a button. Oh, for you to wield powers, you must go high. In Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 to 14, in the angelic realm, one of the beings discovered the mystery of authority. He knew that in the realm of the angelic, he's equally an archangel. But he discovered that the power you have to subdue any context is a function of height. And so suddenly he said, how art thou falling from heaven? Oh, Lucifer, son of the morning. He said, how art thou cut down to the ground? We did weaken the nation. He said, for you have said in your heart, for thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend. He knew that authority is not a dress code. It's a height-based reality. Authority is not how you squeeze your face. You can be smiling and casting out devils. Depending on where you are functioning from. It's not how you squeeze your face. It has nothing to do with how you are sweating. Sweat is a testimony of adrenaline. Power in the spirit is height oriented. I will ascend. He said, I will ascend into the heavens. I will exalt my throne above the stars. That's the angelic rank. So what gives you authority to command the angel is the height where you are operating from. He said, I will ascend above the stars of God and I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. He knew that if he ascended, immediately all the angels will come under his command. This is why when Jesus brought us into the kingdom, in Ephesians 1.21, he said, you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. So a man who wants to walk in the supernatural must pay the price to begin to perceive the realities of those heavenly places. You are seated with heavenly places, but you may not perceive those realities. 
Theologically speaking, you are already seated with Christ. But experientially speaking, your experience and your power is a function of your perception. If you don't perceive the realities that are there, even though you are there, you will not have it. Hope you know that television wave is passing through this hall now. But it's a man with the antenna and the right frequency that we download it. We are all seated with Christ in heavenly places, but few of us are perceiving. And so any man who wants to walk in the supernatural and exercise the authorities of the heavens, he must engage his spirit until he begins to perceive. The ability to engage your spirit to perceive is what we call the mystery of heights. You may read the theology, but you may not see the experience. Because the experience is meant for those who perceive it. All of us can appear before a demon. We will call the name of Jesus and we will call it correctly, linguistically speaking. But in the spirit, somebody is perceiving a reality. And so the men who walk in the supernatural are the men that have engaged the mystery of height. And those who have engaged the mystery of height, they walk from the glory realm. This is why God has done everything for you. But for you to have everything, there are things you will do. There is a lascivious move in the body of Christ where people sit down and quote scriptures. And they have quoted the scripture for 10 years. There's no experience. And they will not tell themselves, what should I do? When Paul met Jesus in the glory, he said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It's hard to kick against the bricks. And Saul was wise. He said, Lord, what will you have me do? The moment he asked that question, he entered the path of authority. What will you have me do? What will you have me do is the question our generation have refused to ask. And if you don't know what to do to cover mileage in the spirit, you will be a victim, even though you are an heir. Because you say an heir, so long as it's a child. The word child is the word nepios. That means he doesn't have understanding how spiritual things work. He's an heir, but he's a nepios. And because he doesn't know how spiritual things work, even though he has authority, he'll be a slave. Because when the princes come, they will find out what can you perceive. Because what you are perceiving is what tells where you are standing experientially. And what, where you are standing experientially is what tells the level of authority that you can wield. When Elijah wanted to judge Ahab, the Bible said he took a 40 days journey to Horeb, the mountain of God. He stood before the king. He said, before God do my stand, there shall be no rain or dew. When he finished talking, he knew he needed height. Because when you are done talking, if you don't gain height, you will be ridiculed. And for 40 days, he journeyed to Horeb. When he stood on Horeb, something happened. The Bible said the Lord passed by him. In 1 Kings 19, verse 11 and 12, he heard the sound of wind, the sound of earthquake, and the sound of fire. He said the Lord was not there. You know, it's when you gain height that you can tell the difference between realities. There may be a shout, but God is not there. There may be thunder, God is not there. When a man succeeds in climbing, the place of glory and the place of height is the place of stillness. The moment there is turbulence in your spirit, you have not ascended. You may be seated with Christ, but so long as there's anxiety, it means you're on the floor. You may be seated with Christ, so long as there is fear, you are on the floor. You may be seated with Christ, so long as there is uncertainty, you are on the floor. And so when we say gain height, we are telling you a place you get to where you become still so that you can see the salvation of God. And it was James that told us that the 40 days journey of Elijah was not just physical journey. It was James that told us that that journey was a journey of prayer. That means the mystery of height is the mystery of praying. And that prayer is not just a casual prayer. It's a praying that is done in the Holy Ghost. The reason is because every man seated here has three dimensions. You have a bodily dimension where anxiety dwells. You have a bodily dimension where fear dwells. You have a bodily dimension where weakness is dwell. But you also have a divine dimension. Because you are both spirit and flesh. It says Christ in you, the hope of glory. The migration of prayer is a transition from the bodily dimension to the divine dimension. That's why it said we know not what we should pray for as we ought to. It said the spirit helpeth our infirmities with groanings that cannot be uttered. You have left a realm beyond your intelligence. You have left a realm beyond reason. You have left a realm beyond fact. And so when you get to your divine dimension, which is the place of the glory, you discover that even though nothing is working, you are at peace. They told you the landlord will kick you out tomorrow, you are at peace. They told you you have 10 days to live, you are at peace. If you are still in your body, anxiety will kill you, but you have ascended. You have journeyed beyond where fear dwells. You have journeyed beyond where uncertainty dwells. But the only mechanism to travel that path 
is the mechanism of prayer. And so even Jesus, the son of the living God, knew that he would not walk in authority except as he's always on the mountain. In Luke chapter 9, verse 28, the Bible said, eight days later, he took Peter, James, and John, and he went to a solitary place to pray. He said, as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment began to blister, and suddenly he made us understand that he went with James, Peter, and John. But when he gained height, Elijah and Moses joined him. When you gain height, you come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God. He said, Elijah and Moses joined him. And he said, the cloud of glory came down and covered him. When Jesus left that mountain, in verse 37 to 41, the Bible said he showed up. And the disciples were battling with a boy that was possessed. Meanwhile, before that time, he had given them power. They went out, cast out demons, and came back celebrating. Suddenly, they brought another demonized person. And they realized they were struggling. And the man who came from height, when he showed up, he said, bring the boy here. The moment they said, bring the boy, he had not spoken. The demons began to throw him up and down. And he said, he rebuked the demon. And the demon left. The reason is because the man who is higher has the greater authority. And when he speaks, you cannot change it. Whether you like it or not, you must obey. Get out of the boy. The same words that the disciples were saying was the same words he used, but the results were different because they were talking from different locations in the spirit. Some people were talking from the location of fear. The disciples were talking from the location of uncertainty. But the man that entered the glory, he doesn't know fear. If you enter this height, most times you don't even know what is happening. The Bible said Moses wished not that his face was shining. But he had touched something. And when he came down, Moses began to operate like a god. He said, except I'm not a man of God. Let the earth open and swallow you up. How dare you think like that? Who told you the earth has a mouth? But when you enter the glory, you can see the code of nature. When you enter the glory, you can see the blueprint of nature. And the guy showed up. Things that had never happened. He was talking to them as if they were casual things. Because in that realm, everything is possible. Everything is possible. They are threatening you at work. Quit the tears. Come and climb. They told you you will die. Quit the sorrow. Come and journey. Come and journey. He said, come up here. I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. He said, call upon the name of the Lord. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. He said, I will show you great and mighty things. There are things you will see that you don't know. There are things that are beyond your realm of understanding. It's in the heights of glory. The problem is our generations don't travel. We don't travel. We talk. We don't travel. If you want to handle the supernatural, you must be a traveler. And every time you want to travel, you engage the equipment of traveling. It looks stupid, but daring is the mystery. It looks foolish, but daring is the mystery. That's why the people of the world can't understand it. You know how funny this mystery is. Even you, it is shielded away from you so that the purity can be kept. He said, when I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, my understanding is unfruitful. If they allow your understanding to come in, your understanding will corrupt it. Because God wants you to affect Africa. And your understanding is telling you, in my lineage, nobody has been known in worry. How can I affect Africa? Because of that, they excuse your understanding. They say, don't worry, engage it without knowing it. And as you are, papa, kika, paka, koka. A point comes, you discover that migrations begin to take place. After a while, all you know are your lineage, your family members. All you know are the stories of your family. A point comes, you appear somewhere and they begin to tell you the stories of Elohim. That before the world was, he was. And he said all things were made by him. Without, without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. The life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came to bear a witness. You begin to hear things that are not written in ordinary book. They are scrolls of eternity. And when you come back, you will not know limitation anymore. When you talk, those who don't know you will say you are proud. But your results will shut them up. The journeys of, of, of immortals. By the time you arrive at that height, the first thing that happens is stillness. There's an assurance you can't explain. 
The theologians call it note of victory. It's not something you pick in a book. It's something you find in a location. And you will travel to reach there. Sometimes you may need to pray for weeks. But if you understand that this is how the codes are, are deciphered, you will not stop. You will not stop. You may not know anybody. Just go up there. When you go up there, you will meet somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows you. And you will sit down. Somebody will wake up 1 a.m. and call you. Suddenly, where you enter, they don't sleep there. So what they do is that they suspend sleep. And they tell him, wake up now. And they will call you until he reaches you. What is the problem? I can't sleep. I want to help you. Uh -uh. Were you not awake since morning? You arrived late. That's why he also responded late. It's when you arrive that things begin to happen. And that assurance becomes a force that no man can take away from you. When you show up in a place, it doesn't matter. Sometimes they undermine you. You will just be laughing. Because you know the power that factored creation into being. There is a stillness. The Bible said that the joy of the Lord is my strength. It's a stillness. The men who carry it, they are not living from earth. They are living from heaven. When they met Jesus, Jesus said, the son of man, which is in heaven. He was walking in Nazareth. But he was walking from a height in the spirit. Because every day before he came out, in Mark 1.35, he went to a solitary place and prayed. He ascends before he comes out. Others come out of their houses. Jesus comes out from the glory. And so nothing moves him. Nothing takes him unawares. When Jesus shows up, if you like, come blind. If you like, come deaf. If you like, come crippled. If you like, no matter how you come, nothing can take him unaware. He has gone to where creation itself was better. There are many who don't join it. The second thing that happens to you when you ascend that height is that you will notice the hand of God. The hand of God is what works the supernatural. But it's for those who understand glory. When Moses went to Horeb, in Exodus chapter 3 from verse 1 to 7, the Lord appeared to him in a bush burning that was not consumed. And when he was done from there, God spoke something that was a wonder. In Exodus 3.20, he said, I will stretch forth my hand. And I will strike Egypt with the whole of my signs and my wonder. But what provoked that hand? It was the height where Moses met him. The disciples understood the mystery. When they were beaten, flogged, and threatened. In Acts chapter 4, from verse 23, the Bible said they gathered to their own company. They said, don't preach anymore. Is it not for you to go and start making connections to get allowance? They returned to their company. And he said, they lifted up their voices and they prayed. He said, as they prayed, the place where they were was shaking. And the Bible said, suddenly, with great power, God gave them witness of the resurrection of Jesus. And great grace was upon them. But that power and grace, they prayed it in verse 29. They said, stretch forth thy hands that signs and wonders may be done in the name of thy holy child. You are talking from earth, you'll be defeated. The spirits you are dealing with, they are mountain beings. And if you don't ascend higher, you can't counteract them. Don't make the mistake of thinking the demon you are dealing with read a book. He doesn't need a book, he's talking from a height. And for you to be able to counter that demon, you must go higher. Who told you? How many books did the ritualist in your village read? How many books did the sorcerers read? They know the technology. Every day they are walking in the forest and they are chanting incantations. They are chanting incantations. When they are intoxicated, they enter their elements. It is in that realm of clothing that they utter their oracles from. You, you are on ground. You, quote, you cram two, three scriptures and then you walk out and say you are a supernatural. You are joking. You are joking. Do you know the energy these guys come with? They are certain priests in darkness when they pass. Pregnant women lose their, 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 their pregnancy. They didn't talk. They came with energy. And then you come with three scriptures you cram. And you think you can change your world. It's a joke. It's a joke. The men that change their world, their knees like camel. When they are there, they don't move. And they will be there. They will be there until there is a shift. I read the story of our father, Ie Adeboe. He said, when he was made the general of Asia, he said, how can he handle this? What will he do? How, how will he go about it? For the first time, he realized that there was something more, com more complex than mathematics. <laughs> he read mathematics to PhD level, but he found something more complex than mathematics. And that one, you don't find it in the university. You find it on the mountain. And so I, re I heard what he said. He said he prayed that night and said, God, Unless something happened, I can't do this. 
and where he stood, he said, a fire came down from heaven, hit the ground, and he said, the tremor that left where he was standing went as far as the boy did. Meanwhile, somebody else is quoting scripture and running around. You know what it means to power a system as bogus as this. It takes heights, heights, heights in the spirit. There's a realm you get to, worry will become small. Those of you, those of you who have traveled in by the air, you know, worry is big until you go up. When you go up, there's a height you get to, worry will become like your palm. And from that realm, from that realm, you can see the whole family. You can address the whole city. And you can change things in the whole territory. That's how it works in the spirit. There is a height you must get to, to be able to download heaven to earth. You are on ground. If you're on ground, hold up can stop you. Mountains can stop you. But when you go higher, you don't know what hold up is. You can see the whole city. This is how the men who walk in the supernatural walk. Yesterday you prayed. The height you got to, you were able to deal with your family issue. But your family is not all your destiny is about. You need to go higher. That's why when John wanted to be authorized, the angel told him, come up here. Come up here. There are heights. There are heights. Come up here. And the point came, John went as far as the throne room. Where are you standing? You want to walk in the supernatural? You must join in the spirit. It's not for those who are running on ground. It's for those who are ascending in the spirit. It's for those who are flying in the realms of God. And it will take a robust prayer energy to be able to attain it. If you are not praying, the supernatural is not for you. Regardless of the impartation you receive, that impartation will last for weeks. After a while, you, ret you return to ground zero. There's a power that beats the escape velocity. It's the power of tongues. And every man who wants to remain supernatural must remain prayerful. If you don't pray, you can't be supernatural. This is the labor of the high flyers of this kingdom. Find out. They have many times, hours in the spirit. Even in the natural, your authority is based on how many hours you have spent on air, in the air. You find a captain, he has stayed in the air for more than 10,000 hours. He's not a novice. He knows how to manipulate. He can manipulate bed strike. He can manipulate the Euroclidon. He can, he can manipulate in the, in the air. That's authority. That's the way we rule in this realm. You will stay there until a point come. You can distinguish the powers of darkness and you can bring legislation that will change things. This is why the things that many shout about for hours, another man gives a command. He has been there for long. He knows what to say. And he knows when to say it and how to say it. If you don't join into the spirit, you'll be a slave. You will carry your whole new creation doctrine. But you will still be a slave. You will carry the doctrine of healing. You will die of sickness. These are hard truths. But these are the labors that the fathers of old put in. To be able to bring a heritage to our generation. And if the next generation has hope, then men of prayer must rise. Because it's only by priesthood. That inheritances are communicated from one generation to another. The first thing you do in order to operate authority and the supernatural is that you must function from height. The prayer of ascendancy. We call it transitions in the spirit. The second thing you must do in order to host continually the supernatural is to walk in light. The Lord will bring men into these realities. It's easy. It's easy to minister them to receive the supernatural. If I want you to receive the supernatural, I can tell you only belief. And if I open three scriptures around it, your heart will be open to receive. But if you want to walk the supernatural, it's beyond only belief. There's a height you must function from. Because that's your faith will commit you to the place of obedience. It is the strength of your obedience that will determine the powers you will command. And the first area of obedience is in prayer. You don't know why prayer is so difficult. When you want to pray, demons will do everything to distract you. They know if you start praying, even if you are an illiterate, you will have more authority than them. You can show up and say, went out, the demon will still obey. Because it's not only responding to your English, it's responding to your thought. You can come and say, went in, he will still go out. It doesn't matter how you articulate it. He knows what you mean. Because 
when you have authority, they don't only interpret your words, they interpret your thought. They know what you mean. There are places you will come to before you talk. The way they look at your face, they know. When Jesus showed up to the gathering maniac, he saw him, they started begging. He had not spoken. Why have you come before your time? Please, please, send us to this wine. How did they know what he wanted? When the man of authority comes, you try to please him quickly. Because you know if he's angry, it's worse. When we were practicing these things earlier, before now, then our pride used to be that we, we, we stood our ground for four hours until the demons left. Until one day the Holy Ghost told me, four hours means weakness. He said, the longer time you spend is a sign of a lack of authority. We went to cast out demons from somewhere and then when we finished casting out demons, is the sweat we come out with. That is our, our badge. And we will not shower until at least 20 people see us. We will come out sweating and say, no, we went to deal with one demon. Until we prayed for three hours plus on one blade. And somebody showed up and said, get out. And the demon left. I said, wait. What were you doing here? Were you punishing us? So you, you didn't want to leave. You were punishing us with all our titles. That was when I discovered authority is a game and certain men know it the men who know it they will spend time in the hiding place when they come out what takes you hours takes them a moment somebody asked me the Graham if you were given another opportunity to preach what will you do differently he said I will spend more time in prayers if you spend more time in prayers what takes you months can take you hours what take you weeks can take you minutes and what take you hours can take seconds. All is a function of where you are operating from. The second thing that men of the supernatural have in excess is light. Light. When you find a man who works in the supernatural, he is flooded with light. What is the light? The light is the revelational knowledge of the word of God. The Bible said in the beginning was the word. John chapter 1 verse 1. The word was with God and the word was God. He said the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. The life was the light of men. And so until the word of God becomes your light, you will not have authority. In 1 John chapter 1 verse 7, he said, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, as he is in the light, he said the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. That's one dimension of the supernatural. Because forgiveness of sin is a supernatural reality. But that's not the only dimension. If you walk in light, the power of God responds. If you walk in light, the wisdom of God responds to you. It takes walking in light to continually and perpetually command the supernatural. I can stop this message now and start moving in the spirit. It's not keyboard that provokes power. It's light. If you don't have it, you don't have it. You can do it before the service. You can do it after the service. And you can leave the service and do it in the market. You don't need organized people to move in power. You need light to move in power. And if you don't have light, at the end of the day, you will drift into psychology. And nobody will enjoy what God has to offer. Jesus was the word. But until he became light, he had no authority. The Bible said in Luke 4, 14, that the land of Zebulun, that the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentile, the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. Until you become the light or you see the light, you cannot walk in the supernatural. The supernatural responds to light and that light is the revelational word of God. What does it mean to walk in light? Your mind, your emotions and your will are controlled by the word of God. If your mind, your emotion, and your will is not controlled by the word of God, you can't walk in the supernatural. Jesus said you made the word of God of none effect by your tradition. That means the power in the world can be destroyed when it doesn't have authority over your mind. If your mind is at variance to the word, the word will become helpless with you. Remember, the word upholds all things. Everything is upheld by the word of his power. But that powerful word can become useless except as it dominates you first. If you are ascending by prayer, I said you will come to the place of stillness and you will see the hand of God. When you are operating by light, it also has its dynamics. Why prayer is a product of transition 
light is a product of transformation. Because it's not just about where you are standing. It's about who you are, where you are standing. And so why prayer helps you to transit, light transforms you. So you are no longer who you used to be. They say we all with open faces, beholding us in the glass, the image of the Lord, we are metamorphosed. And so you want to see a man who walks in the supernatural. It's not when he's preaching. Go and check his life. If that man is transformed, there are certain things that will work out in his life. The first is godliness. You know, when we talk about the word of God, many times people think it's just to quote it. No. If the word of God controls you, it will show in your character. It will show. If it doesn't show in your character, it means it doesn't have authority over you. And if it doesn't have authority over you, it cannot have authority through you. Until the word of God has authority over you, it can't have authority through you. That's where many get it wrong. Because the word you don't believe cannot produce result. And if you truly believe it, the sign that you believe is that you obey it. And so when you find a man who walks in light, the first thing the word of God does to him is that it causes him to become godly. And godliness is not just sinlessness. Godliness also means to operate like God. That means to function in integrity. If you tell me you'll be here by 4 and you come here 4.30 and you don't let me know, it means your word means nothing to you. And if your words mean nothing to you, it means the word of God has not dominated you. Because when the word of God dominates you, your word will become the word of God. So when you find a generation of people that words mean nothing to them, they can never walk in the supernatural. If you like, go to 20 Bible schools. You tell somebody, I will call you by one. One o'clock passes, the person calls you, you don't pick. You knew you would not pick, but you said one. And then you come back later, the same word that means nothing to you, you want to use it for a demon. The demon will look at you and say, what are you saying? Does this word mean anything to you? You are saying what means nothing to you. You think I will obey it. Get out. And then you will finish doing religion and drama. Nothing will happen. And you will escape from there a thousand times. The Holy Ghost taught me these things. He said, listen boy, if you want to walk in power, don't just quote scripture. He said, the first place I will veto it is the degree that he rules over you. When you speak the word, how many times do you come under the authority of the word? If the word is not strong through you, in you, it cannot be strong through you. It's not just to teach the doctrine. It's to first of all become servants of the world. Luke said we are servants of the world. We are servants. That's why when we say the word, it must happen. Because these words we speak, it means life and death to us. The second thing you will see in a man who is walking in light is purity. The reason is because life and death is in the tongue. That means life and death is in the world. When a man is found or prone to using vulgar words, corrupt words. It means death is in his bosom. And he comes back later. No matter the declarations he makes, it's death that comes out of him. He may not realize it. When you see a man who walks under the authority of the world, there are certain things he can't say or think. If you like killing, he will never say it. He will not say it jokingly. He will not say it seriously. He can't say it. Because he understands the power of words. He has come under the authority of the word of God so much that the word of God is all that dwells in him. So he doesn't allow death. Some of the garbage we pick from society and we say casually. And then when we come from miracle meeting, we close our eye and we start invoking all the powers of heaven. Nothing works. Because death already dwells in our bosom. You find the man who is under the authority of the word, the word is a law to him. And the reason the word is a law to him is because the life of the world controls him. That's why the Bible said the spirit, the law of the spirit of life have set me free from the law of sin and death. So the supernatural is not a manifestation primarily. The supernatural is a posture primarily. The posture you sustain is what provokes the manifestation. If the world has no authority over you to the degree that it bets only life in you, you will not see the supernatural. A comedian says something, you pick it, that becomes your slogan. You go and watch a reality TV. Immoral people are talking. That becomes your daily language. And then you come out later, you say you want to cast out devils. When you just came out from BB Niger, you work for seven hours. You are quoting the right words, but death is in your bosom. Because that thing you heard, it didn't stop in your ear. It became an energy in your spirit. And the Bible said in Ephesians 3.20, God is able to do 
exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power. That means God is limited to the power at work in you. Every time you allow wars, you are either pro, you are programming your spirit either for good or for evil. And many people are too programmed for death to be able to command life. This is why even when you teach them the scripture, they quote it the way you are quoting it, they never see the result. Because what is in them is different from what is on their lips. They have programmed death into themselves too much to be able to communicate life. I told you, it's not just about quoting one or two scriptures. It's about a life in the spirit. The world must dominate you. If we open you up in the spirit and play your thought on this screen, what will come out? That's what we tell whether you are supernatural or natural. Because what you have inside is what you will manifest. You may come to a, a religious gathering and say what they usually say because you understand the cliche but you will not have the result because the princes know you from within they are not only interested in what you are saying they are first of all interested in who you are and what the world comes to do is to make you a who before it makes you a what if you are not a who of God you cannot manifest the word of God so the first dimension of the authority of the world is in godliness the second dimension is in purity and the third dimension is in specificity when you find a man who is skilled in the supernatural he doesn't throw his words around every utterance he makes is tailored deliberately for a purpose you will never find idle words you will never find careless words all his words are deliberate because he knows that his words carry power your consciousness is what determines how you speak if you know that your words carry power you will send your words for definite and deliberate things. When you find men who talk anywhere and anyhow, their words have no authority. And so when a man is walking in light, what light we teach him is that the word must reprogram him. It's not just about a transition. It's also about a transformation. To what degree are you transformed? If you are deliberately transformed, you will discover that the supernatural will become byproduct because you will not just live where you are. You will live from another realm. I'm telling you this, it looks simple, but this is why believers never manifest. They come to church, they hear a message, they practice the message, but they don't become what the message says. Hey, I, hey, I, hey, I, hey, I, hey, I, hey, I, hey, hey, I, hey, I, hey, I, in the operation of the supernatural specificity is too important don't box the wind don't be uncertain be definite be deliberate listen you will come to a point where in a whole day you can tell everything you spoke you can tell everything you addressed because you don't just talk because you feel like you talk as a king that has power because you know your day is programmed when you come to a place where it's not worth it you have power to keep yourself quiet that's a man of the supernatural when he talks he's changing things he knows that his words are not for fun his words are creative imagine if God talks the way we talk the level of incoherence the level of chaos that would have been on the earth imagine if God talks the way we talk most of the things he created he would have destroyed it before the earth started because you are talking left talking right talking up talking down no coherence there is no wisdom that governs the way you speak it means you have not known the word when you know the word of God and it's planted in your spirit it begins to design your utterances and you will only talk right and not wrong you will only talk good and not evil you will only talk life and not death. You are tailored in a particular direction because the world will program you. There are many people, they talk faith today, they talk fear tomorrow. They talk life today, they talk death tomorrow. And they think they can walk in the supernatural. God himself will withdraw it. Because if God allows them that authority, they will kill themselves. Somebody wakes up in the morning, the first thing he says is, I don't die. Imagine if your words have power. I don't die. Ah, that's what you woke up with. And you are expecting, God can't risk putting power in your life. 
They try to offend the person. You are dead. You are crazy. And tomorrow you now come and kneel down and tell God, please bless these children. Which one will he listen to? He said, I the lost, I confirm the words of my servant. I perform the counsels of my messenger. If God were to confirm your words, would you not have killed all your family members? Talking nothing and everything, making no sense. And then we come to church because we are now dressed and religious. We think that we will suddenly see power. God will never let us handle power. Because if he gives us power, our, some people wake up and every day they say, nothing they work for this town. Ah, don't be worried again. Nothing they work here. Ah, and you are the one God will give power to. You will immobilize the prayer of 1,000 intercessors. Because there are 1,000 intercessors that have been praying for five years for a change in worry. And every day you wake up, you say, nothing they work. God will withdraw the supernatural from you. You can never see it. Because your ability to work the supernatural will negate the effort and the labors of others. You want to handle the supernatural. The world must become a dictator over your mind, over your emotion, and over your action. These are the powers that the men who understand these dynamics wield. Why do you think when you find powerful men, they talk less? You think that's their personality? No. They've come to realize that wars is beyond form. They have come to realize that wars are creative. They have come to realize that life and death is operated by wars. And so they will only choose to speak life. You will leave this conference and begin to practice these things. And you will see how you will suddenly begin to move in terrible dimensions that your faith of 10 years have not been able to bear. The reason most of us have not yet seen the supernatural is because God is afraid of committing it to us. He doesn't know what to do with it. Why do you think before they give guns to people, they train them? They train them. When you see a soldier man with gun, you are confident. But when you see a thief with a gun, you fall down and you faint. Why? One is trained, the other is not trained. One is lawful, the other is lawless. It's not the gun you fear, it's who carries it you fear. And that's why God can't give you power. Because you, you, when you handle, when he gives you power, you will be like a terrorist. Somebody gossips you, the next thing you say, he's finished. They tell you another person says something, you say he will die before tomorrow. They tell you, they, the next day will come out in worry and there will be dead men on the streets everywhere. What happened? You have, now you have killed off everybody. This is why we don't walk in the supernatural. I'm telling you, many times we think because he sounds spiritual, he's so religious. They are basic things. And many people don't know why they never walk there. You have fasted for 40, 40 days and 40 nights for over 10 years, but you have not seen power. God is afraid. Because if he gives you that power, the first thing you will wreck will be your family. And so in order to keep more people safe, you will withdraw the power. Most of you, your labors are hanging in the spirit, waiting for the day the world will become a governor over you. And the day that happens, suddenly, God will open everything. And you begin to move in escalated dimensions of the supernatural. This conference will not be over until your tongue is chiseled. I don't have time again. We have 17 minutes. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah.
have about 16 minutes, I want us to journey. Somebody, you've never prayed to a point where you forget your environment before. You have never prayed that much. In the next seven minutes, you want to pray as if you are alone. Because you want to travel somewhere for the first time. And when you get there, you want to make a declaration over something that has been a mountain in your life. And see how these things work. You want to try it for the first time. And see how things will work. I tell you a story. Some years ago, I think this was about six years ago. The Lord told me he wanted me to travel around the world. And I laughed. How do you travel from Benue? Who will take you there? Who knows you? There's nobody in my lineage that is even a, a senior pastor. In my immediate family, I'm the first person speaking in tongues. How do you get to travel? And the Lord told me, wait. Wait upon, wait upon me. And I went to the place of prayer. And as I was praying, suddenly, I was caught up in a trance. And I saw an eagle that is bigger than the beauty. When this eagle stretches its wings, it will move from one state to another. The eagle was moving from state to state. And as I was praying in this trance, suddenly I saw somebody hanging on the wings of the eagle. And as I remained there, now this vision, it looks as if it was a second, but the vision was becoming clearer and clearer as though they were zooming in. They were zooming in. At first I saw the eagle, I noticed that it was moving from state to state. And then I saw somebody hanging on the wings. And as I stayed there, after a while, I now discovered I was the one hanging on the wings. If I stopped, it would have just been the mystery of the flying eagle. But as I kept pressing, God zeroed in. The moment I saw myself, it became my reality. And I will wake up every day invitations from everywhere come and preach what what am i saying i realize it's not about the message any reality you touch in the spirit becomes your reality in the natural this is why men journey i don't know where you are currently you may be in a pit but your destiny is to pull men out of the pit you may be sick but your destiny is to heal others what can you see what you can see is a function of where you can travel to you want to travel for the next five minutes and pray for getting everybody and say, today, I want to handle it. John said that which we have heard, we have seen, we have handled, we commit to you. I don't know what you are looking for, but in the next five minutes, you want to pray in the Holy Ghost. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah.
I open that dimension to you. Holy Ghost. Bare velo kade. Ay 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 ay. Ay 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 Some of you will be quiet in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Arwa katoba la kaya. Kula pa. Kuku ku. less than 24 people now receiving the baptism of power a fresh dimension of power as I'm talking now they will be anointed and at the same time everybody under any demonic spell any demonic weight they are being lifted now I command demons and demonic oppression get out of their bodies the power of God is touching them ushers please help me Inside, outside, on the galleries, fresh dimension. Some of you have been drunk in the spirit. You have been drunk in the spirit. Receive that power. Enter that order. Enter that realm. Enter that dimension. Step into that dimension. Step into that dimension. function in the angelic order angels will minister to you literally as I'm talking now some of you will be drunk in the Holy Ghost instantly on this gallery here please stretch your hands there are angelic operations happening now wherever you are now by the spirit take that order step into that order step into that order oh, oh, no. help them oh, Help them now, help Holy them now. Oceans, help them. Step Holy into that dimension. Hey, Step yeah, into that yeah, dimension. Yeah, the glory rounds hey, of the anointing. Yeah, Holy yeah, Ghost. Yeah, yeah. into the realms of power dimensions of authority that you read about or you saw in others is being activated I call it forth from your womb step into realms of power carriers of the glory 
Aligamana Zuza Teke Aregendo Zakida There are over seven people being drunk in the Holy Ghost You are being drunk, you are being drunk in the Holy Ghost Receive that fresh wine Receive that fresh wine Receive that fresh wine A new order opens to you Thank you Father Thank you Father In Jesus name Right now hear me People are already receiving healing Many things happening at the same time Men are already receiving healing And so wherever you are I take authority over the spirits of infirmities Growths in the bodies In the breast In the armpit Any part of the body I command you now dematerialize I see ears here I command pains be gone I command joint conditions Burn conditions be healed in the name of Jesus. Blood infections be healed. I command infirmities be gone in the name of Jesus. Heart conditions, liver conditions, kidney conditions be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Ah, my God. The territory of worry is being mapped. It's being mapped. Angels are entering the city and they are apportioning territories to people. Authority to take over territories is resting upon people. Now, in the name of Jesus, Enter that realm. Enter that realm. In ministry, in the academia, in the economy. Receive your inheritance. Step into that realm now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Fresh ordinations are being activated. The visions you saw many years ago that has remained dormant, they are being activated. The power to work those visions, the power to work those orders, the powers to work those ordinations, receive it now. Ushers, please help them quickly so people don't step on them. Yeshua ah, ah, ah. Yeshua Yeshua ah, ah, ah. Yeshua Amasia for four years this is is getting to five years and the lord is touching you now the plague of barrenness is ending tonight and i use as a point of contact everyone trusting god for the fruit of the womb receive your child now receive your child now in the name of jesus the lord is touching people i'm seeing arthritis of different form living people pains on the back you couldn't lift your hands they are going now if you couldn't walk stand up 
You couldn't lift your hand. Somebody couldn't lift your hand. Your shoulders are locked. Your hands can be lifted now. Check, you are healed. Check, check, you are healed. Growth, leaving people's bodies. Growth, I command them to go now. To go now. Somebody stepped on a charm and there's been a movement in your leg. That movement ceases now. I release the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive your healing. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I'm seeing somebody with a hole in the heart. There's a hole, a hole in the heart. They told you you have a hole in the heart. And you have been weak, almost paraplegic. The strength of God is mantling you now. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Somebody has had ulcer for close to seven years. I'm sensing this in front of me. Somebody has an ulcer, an ulcer condition. I'm sensing this somewhere in front. I don't know who has an ulcer condition. You have just received your healing. This is in front of me here. Please come out. You have been healed. I cause that affliction now in the name of Jesus. My God, you are healed. It's permanent in the name of Jesus. Please help mama. I'm seeing somebody with a neck fracture towards my left here. A neck fracture. It's like your neck, there was a sprain. And you've carried that pain. Your neck has just been reset. Somewhere towards the left here. Who is the person, please? Quickly. We're out of time. Please check. Check your bodies. I can't take testimonies. But we need to give glory to God on your account. Somebody couldn't lift his hands. Now you can lift it. Can you check? Can you check? There's a growth. It has left your body. If you have noticed the healing, can you please come here quickly? Yes, Papa, you can lift that hand. You can lift it. Lift it up. You are healed permanently. If you have noticed the change, come here quickly. Please, please, come quickly. Come quickly. We can't take the testimonies, but we will give glory to God. I told you I didn't come necessarily to pray for the sick. I came to energize you to walk in the supernatural. But many have been touched of God. If you are in the overflow, you have been healed. Is the overflow far from here? Can they quickly come here so we just glorify? They are far. Okay, you can come to the front of the screen. You are in a hole, there's an overflow. You are in an overflow, you've noticed a touch. Come to the front of the screen. We'll just give glory to God on your account. Many are being healed now. Many are receiving their healings. Eye conditions, ear conditions, inflammations of different other, they are being healed and it's permanent. Yeshu, oh, oh, ah, ah. Glory to Jesus. A knee condition it's like there's a challenge with your kneecap for at least two years you have not been able to use you have been healed mama you are the one it's with your knee can you check that knee is healed check it you are healed it's perfected the Lord said so and it is so you are healed come on come up mama come up it's it's gone forever come up that affliction it's gone forever. Amen. Lift your knee. Come on, mama. Aya. Come on, mama. It's permanent. Yes.
before? There was a challenge with your joint. Is it gone now? It's gone. Come on, Papa. Ask him for how long has that been? We can't take testimonies. You couldn't lift your hands? Yes, within this year, when are they? No feet lift your left. You no feet lift your hands. But now you can't. I can't lift it. It's gone. Come on, give Jesus a shout. There are many healings. We are out of time. We just want you to come out so we use you as a point of contact to give glory to God. Can you lift your hands toward heaven and worship the Lord? Just give him thanks for tonight. Give him thanks. Worship his name. Exhort his name. Exhort his name. Thank you, Father. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. My God. Somebody has been in a state of financial stagnation. The Lord says to tell you, He says, Your source is not it. And so from today, He will supply your needs according to His riches. He will supply your needs according to His riches. Because you have called upon the name of the Lord. Receive your blessings now. In the name of Jesus. You didn't go before a native doctor. You came to the Most High. And so he will show you that he is the Ebenezer. Receive the help of God now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yeshu. is doing we won't we can't say some of you as you go back home you will discover something has changed we can't even take those who are healed some of you as you go back home you will discover your realm has changed you will kneel down to pray and suddenly you will pray for six hours you will kneel down to pray suddenly you will start having encounters upon encounters because things have shifted for you in the name of Jesus, so let it be established. Yeshua. order of the supernatural is transition you are activated by prayer to attain height the second order of the supernatural is transformation you achieve it by walking in the light of the world the third order which is the major foundation of the supernatural is the life of God if you don't have eternal life everything we have shared here will be story that will never be accomplished in your life I didn't have time to teach on it, to dwell on it. But listen, all you need to do tonight is to believe in your heart and to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. That's all it takes. You may be going to church, you may have been born into a Christian home. It doesn't mean you have the life of God. If you have the life of God, relationship will be activated. And so in the next two minutes, you are here you are not sure of your stand with God. You are not sure of your relationship with God. And you want to use this opportunity quickly tonight to receive that life and to awaken that relationship. If you are in this auditorium, can you please place your hand on your chest quickly. Those of you at the various overflows, please hear me. Those of you at the various overflows, you want to make this decision Wherever it is you are, can you please stand? Please stand. Everybody can be seated for one minute. Just be seated. You are not sure of your relationship with Jesus. You want to make things right with Christ. You want to receive the life of God. 
wherever you are. He said, if you are not ashamed of me before men, I will not be ashamed of you before my heavenly father and his holy angels. Stand up to your feet wherever you are now. You want to receive Jesus. You want to, re to, to build your relationship with him. I want to see those who are standing. Can you wave at me if you are standing? You are standing. I want to be sure that we have them. You are standing. Quickly, take your bag, take your Bible, and walk up to the front fast. You are making the best decision of your life. If you are in the overflow, walk to the front of the screen. Quickly, quickly. Encourage them, clap for them, clap for them. This is the best decision of their lives. Yeshua. decision of your life i assure you wow they are still coming yes come on be fast be fast we we'll wait for the last person be fast can you clap hands for jesus people don't make this decision because they are reasonable they make this decision because it is revealed to them can you imagine we give god praise if it were for you alone, this conference is worth it. Yes. This is the best thing happening in this conference. Congratulations on this great decision you have made. Church, can you celebrate them? I see people in front of the screens, even in the overflows. You will just say this prayer with me, if you believe it with all your heart. All you need to believe is to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for your sins, he was buried, and after three days he rose again so that you will not be condemned and so that you can receive his life. If you believe these truths, then you need to confess with your mouth and say, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. Can I lead you to make that prayer? You believe what I've said? Say, dear Heavenly Father, I believe with all my heart that Jesus is your son. He died for my sins. He was buried. And he rose again on the third day. For my justification. I confess with my mouth today. That Jesus. Is my Lord and Savior. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I belong to the family of God. Thank you, Father, for receiving me. In Jesus' precious name, I have declared. May the Lord keep you and preserve you. May the yoke of sin be broken for you, from your life. May the shield of God surround you for preservation. May the wisdom of God and the light of his countenance guide you. May none of your steps slide. And may you walk perpetually in the house of God, enjoying of the blessings of the kingdom. So, let it be written, and so let it be established in Jesus precious name amen now look at the counselor over there you just go with him just go with him he will tell you what to do congratulations clap for them celebrate them Yeshua.